that again. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode six of the Dreamer Cigars podcast. My name is Adam Gard, aka Age the Dreamer, and I am your host. And I'm your co host, Logan Hamilton, aka Hambone. And today, again, we have a very special guest, Michael Danahe. Danahe. Danahe, excuse me. Oh, it's cool because you can always be like, Danahe. <laughs> there you go. I love it. I had a lot of recovery since I was in middle school. So. Nice, it's nice. Very Michael, nice. how are you doing? Great, guys. Great. So good? Yeah. So, Michael, explain to us what you do. I, I was going to introduce you, but let's, sure. let's let you explain what you do. All right, so I'm the senior marketing manager for Red Air Brewing and Distilling. We're located in Marriott, Georgia. Yes, senior. It makes me sound like so much more mature. You know, I'm, you know I'm mature because I say mature. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. No. But, um, I am one of those guys who gets to love going to work every day because I just get to talk about beer and spirits all the time. Awesome. And now I get to talk about cigars. Another that, that is awesome. awesome. That, yeah. Before we get too far into it, guys, go ahead. Let's let's cut up these fantastic cigars. Today we are smoking the Camacho Factory Unleashed. And if you guys notice on your cigar, oh yeah, that was it's like nice. this is hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> every one on every episode has said, "Oh my God, look at this cover. This is so much cooler than." That. Boring ass cutters. <laughs> there you go. Shout out to my boy Mike at Regency Cigars for the for the cutter. And great guy. Check him out. RegencyCigars.com. Look at that. Yeah, man. Check such it out. a cut. Such, such a good clean cut. Oh yeah. Very, very. Say that again. Where did you get that? Not even like a plug. I mean, no. Oh. RegencyCigar.com. Okay. Regency Cigar. Yeah. The, yeah. the guy's fantastic. He really has high end stuff. He sells Davidoff as well. But anyways, if you notice on the cigars, guys, this. The wrapper doesn't go all the way to the top. I was going to say, there's a little fluff piece going. I was <laughs> a like, little fluff piece. That's what happened, what is that all about? You know, the fluff piece, um, it should have been named, yeah, it should have been named the fluff piece, but what it's really called is the shaggy foot. Okay. And that's actually not a joke. It is called the shaggy foot. Okay. And the shaggy foot I got one of those. Is, really, <laughs> is really important for people who are trying to learn how to taste the cigar, get the notes out of the cigar, because more than half, or you know, it's debated, but pretty much more than half of the taste from a cigar comes from the wrapper, the outside okay. tobacco. Now, if you light it without the wrapper, and then eventually you get to the wrapper, you should notice a change in taste. So, so that's so how. So in the in the few minutes it'll take to get here, I'm gonna notice the difference. You should, and if you try and pay attention, you will. Hey, pay attention, Michael. I'm trying, man. This death my teachers. Well, we're, while we're lighting this cigar. Michael, why don't you tell us how you got the cigars in the first place? What was your what's your origin story? Man? My origin story. Well, well, we forgot to talk about the taste. Sorry, right, listeners, please hold. Well, no, you're good. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, no, that was perfect. Yeah, that guy's got to talk about the cigars. Okay, let's keep going. Yeah, keep going. So we got we got to talk about the cigar itself. We talked about the shaggy foot, but what are, what are we going to get out of this cigar? Okay, so according to Camacho, we're going to get an earthiness. We're gonna get a little spice, cedar, and some creaminess once it hits that wrapper. And the reason we're gonna get some creaminess, creaminess, because that wrapper is an Ecuadorian Rojo wrapper, which typically adds to that creaminess if you have that on a cigar. And then the binder is on under and so it's under this. But the filler, the filler is a whole array of your your, your typical cigar or tobacco companies or uh, countries. You got Honduran tobacco in the filler, you got Nicaraguan tobacco and tobacco from the uh, Dominican Republic. So we're all across the board in this cigar. But with all that said, we're gonna smoke it, we'll let you know what we think. Michael, go ahead. How did you get in the cigar? Yeah. This cigar? Okay, so my friends here in Georgia like to make fun of me because I always talk about how much I love Kentucky. Because I am a uh Yeah. Well, <laughs> well it's Georgia anyway. Yeah, okay. yeah, I was gonna say we're from South of Kentucky, right? Uh, yeah. But uh, no, so I grew up in Kentucky. Um, one of my favorite things about like culture and tradition in Kentucky is that there's you always like to go and have a day at the races and uh, horse racing. Horse racing, yes. And there is nothing more fun than you know having a winning ticket at Keeneland, which is the big horse racing track in Lexington, or you know, Keeneland. or you go to Churchill Downs Pool. Oh yeah, uh, and just like Belton Park, Morning Kentucky. Well, yeah, the East Turfway Park was the one I grew up with, but then they tore that down. Yeah, they put that in. But you're just doing the whole, like, you got the ticket, and you got this guy here. Right, right, right. 
who's counting your money? Uh, who's still like big big spender? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I went to the University of Kentucky and there's a track right there, Kingman. And so I kind of the first time I ever experienced cigars was um, there at the track, especially the they sell a lot of like the makers met or makers mark like condition or like they I think they age them in the makers mark barrel yeah. uh, cigars. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I'm just talking about that too. Yeah. So those are like some of my first ones, and honestly, that's kind of like my introductory to the world. And then, um, again, being in Kentucky, I love a good glass of bourbon or whatever, so they pair really well with those sort of things. And I just kind of got into them from there. So that's interesting. I love going to Keeneland. So I actually went to college in Kentucky at Western Kentucky University. A little birdie told me that you might have gone to college in Kentucky. Oh, yeah. wait, I'm sorry. sorry. Where did you go to college? I went to college in Kentucky as well. <laughs> so Podcast. Small but, world, isn't it? But we're going to stay away from Kentucky. I mean, I, I think that's under, okay. it's under right. contract. Not too <laughs> but we're not pairing with a bourbon today. No, we are not. Right? Yeah. We are pairing. What, what are we pairing with? This is a new beer from Red Hair. It's, yeah. it's our fall season. So it just came yeah. out for the year. Yeah. So, we're going to pull a little bit of can up here. There you go. So, this is our Austin Pepper Oktoberfest. Um, it is going to be a uh, Marzen style beer, just launched for the season. Oktoberfest is the perfect kind of beer to transition from summer into fall uh, because, you know, when you're in the air conditioning during the summertime, it's really, really nice. <laughs> and, then as you get, uh, and then when you start moving into those months where you're sitting by the campfire, um, hanging out, you know, like in the evenings or what have you, it's, it's really, really refreshing beer. It's going to have some nice caramel kind of nelly tones to it. Um, and honestly, Thinking about different beers that go with cigars, I know a lot of the times when people think beer and cigars, first off, it's not necessarily a natural fit. People don't always yeah, like people don't always go like, there. Yeah, but but it, it's something that you can do. Like yeah. I, as you move into those darker beers, like it, it, it works better. So I think it's kind of like a, I actually started out with lighter beers and smoking cigars, and then I moved into um, obviously the, the famous drink here, Cutters, the espresso martini. But, um, and then I moved into darker beers, and that was an entire change. Yeah, you just had that for the first time the other week, right? I did. Yeah. And what was what was that? It was, it was a, a um, it was a coffee stout. Coffee stout. Oh, yeah. That kind of sounds great. Yeah, it's very nice. But um, I haven't had this one. So is that you've had it said yet? No, I haven't. Well, I come on. Let's see. Let's yeah, see. Let's roll. Ew. No. <laughs> Mm, I think it's really rich mahogany. Oh, okay. <laughs> those, those wooden notes. Though. Yeah. That's actually really good. I like that. That's, yeah, it, it really is. I've, I've had a couple of sips of it. Honestly, it's it. pairing with the cigar even better than I kind of thought it would. I, 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 was a little, yeah, I, mean, I was a little nervous, but this is, this is a good combo. I'm going to like it actually here. Yeah, it, it really, people, people don't think about it, but you can, if, you're, if you aren't a liquor guy, you just, you don't, or gal, you just don't do rum, tequila, scotch, any, any of it. You can drink beer and smoke cigars. It's not like, people don't do it often, but you can. It's not like a yeah. frowned upon thing. People just don't do it that often. Right. So there's nothing wrong with it or there's no reason why, but people just like to do that. Man. If you're a beer drinker, if you're a craft beer drinker, grab a cigar and try, try different beers. Your, your cigar will taste different. With like, for instance, you know your your SPF right there. Yeah. Well, as to with this or you know any coffee stuff that you may have or anything like that, it's gonna taste your cigar will taste different every time. So it's really cool to be able to play with that. You know, I I'm a big craft beer guy. You know, I mean, shout out to Untapped. <laughs> Maybe we'll get sponsored by Untapped. That'd be funny. But we are supported by Untapped. <laughs> there you go. But um, you know, it's. It's really something that I've seen, like, yeah, I'll, I, I enjoy craft beer and I really enjoy the cigars, obviously. And pairing them is, it works. It, it's, it's something that, you know, we want to make sure the audience understands that is you don't have to go buy a, you know, $200 bottle of whiskey to pair your cigar with. Like, you can have a decent beer. I think one of the things I've noticed is everybody's got their own flavor palette, whether it's in the beer world or just if you're going Really, really high level alcohol room. Just like drink what you want to drink and smoke what you want to smoke. Most definitely. I think this, I mean, after having one sip of this, it's got me into it. I think I'm going to try different things. I'm going to give my palate some different taste now because 
that paired beautifully just now. And I'm still tasting the notes after that. But I mean, even even with you know experimenting with different kinds of drinks, next next week's episode we're going to be um, talking about wine and how cigars paired with wine with our, our guest, our very special guest. Uh, so definitely be in tune into that. But uh, with that, um, I do have a question for you, Michael. So what would you say is the absolute best thing working with you in your industry? What do you love about it? Okay, so I think it's got to be like, and I, and I think that you guys can probably relate to this in the cigar world. Okay. Uh, the community of people that you work with, the atmosphere. That, and not even just work with, the community of people you get to serve. Right. Um, it's good for the people, yes. Well, the people, the, all right, so the, the bartender's at Red Hair will make fun of me because I will give what is, <laughs> yeah, and also a shout out to John. Shout out to John behind the camera, yeah, behind the camera, the producer of this podcast. There it is. Longer, I can afford to pay for it. More subscribers so we can get another yeah, one. <laughs> but no, honestly, it's they make fun of me because I'll go and I'll give like super, super long tours. And it's because I love talking about what I do and I love like sharing that information with people who actually care and are like really interested in learning those kind of things. And then, you know, also, I mean, just in the craft beer industry in general, we take care of each other, you know, we're always looking out for each other. It's fun to like, taste other people's products. It's like yeah. getting a share, like, you know, the moments that you share over a cigar, for example, are the same kind of conversations and moments that you're going to share over, like, a good beer. And we start stealing to or so, like, you know, over a good cocktail. I think what it really comes down to is these kinds of products are the kinds of products that stimulate conversation in good times. And, like, I think my favorite thing about the job are the emotions and like interaction with people in the room. That's really cool. I like that. Really cool. you, know, you get a lot of good interactions when you go on those, when you have those tours. You know, do, do you feel like uh, there's you know some people on those tours that don't really care about it or just aren't? Well, you know, sometimes there, sometimes there are people who are just doing it because like they thought it would be fun, right? And I mean, I'm not gonna force anybody to stay on the tour. You're right, right. Right. Sure. But you're looking out for those people that are actually yeah. interested and really want to learn something. And you all you know, get people asking you questions at that end, and, and you know, I always like throw up personal anecdotes about stuff because you know, beer, liquor, what have you, it's not just about the product, it's about the people behind the product. Right. And especially working in the craft industry, a lot of like art and passion and like I mean, take our brewery for example. There are five guys that work in the back. So I can literally name right now the five people that packed that can. That's super and, and awesome. like that's really, really rewarding to know that like when I'm enjoying something that we made as a team, that it was like a team effort and like the people that actually put an effort behind it. Like it's not like when you go and I'm not knocking anybody's drink of choice, but if you were to go and say buy a beer that is made from like like a macro product, right? Yeah. Like, I, didn't I, didn't say say it. It. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. We're not gonna be sponsored by Bud Light. <laughs> Walmart, no buy, they're all out of here. And sure, I'm not going to knock anybody for working the American dream and making the money. Absolutely. But by the same token, there's something to be said for like being the community, the hometown brewery. Yeah. That, that they think is like what really. Well, that, that is happen. definitely so something like that. that the cigar industry has as well. You know, the the rollers, like you know, these these big companies, they'll, they'll go and they'll see the rollers. It's all like you know that this cigar was handcrafted. There wasn't a bunch of machines. There was, you know, there may have been, like, you know, what, what did we talk about for us? There may have been, like, 20 guys that touched this cigar that went into trying to craft this specific cigar in my hand. And I get to enjoy that experience from their hard work. So it's, it's a really cool thing. But with all that said, i got to ask. Because I know, like, you know, you hear, okay, I work in the beer industry. Like, okay. that, that's fun, right? That's a... Oh, am I moving into the hot seat? <laughs> there you go. Well, well, there's got to be things that people don't didn't see coming, or right? like you didn't see coming. Like you know, people don't think about like, oh, you work in the beer industry. Oh, that's super easy. Like, what what's a challenge that you come across in your industry that like people would be like, okay, maybe that's not super easy, or like, is it is that, or is it just really easy? No, no, no. no. This, job, <laughs> this job is super fun and super hard, and, and I, I I like am very glad to be a part of this industry. But yeah, I mean. The reality is, especially right now, uh, so the craft beer movement got started, I believe it was the early 70s around. Jimmy Carter, when he was president, basically passed a law and said you can start home brewing. 
<laughs> so when that oh. takes place, yeah, a Georgia guy. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 and so when that takes place, some of your yeah. some of your bigger craft breweries like the Sierra Nevadas of the world got started because they just got to like pick cool turn them. But at that point in time, those were the only craft beers in the world. And then like what's a book? Dem not dem dem we'll, we'll like go more microcosm and look at Georgia as a whole. So Red Hair um, was the first craft brewery in Georgia to can beer. We are within the top ten first craft breweries. I want to say we're number four or five that got started. We're ten years old, right? I have no idea. Oh, no, no, Jill. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that's, that's, no, it is really cool. And I like I like the fact that I work for one that was, if you will, one of the OGs. Yeah. Craft beer yeah. But that being said, that being said, there's a craft brewery open up on every sidewalk and every corner yeah. every day of the week, right? So when do you think that movement started, right? That's because it's because people want to push a huge glass of beer. It's because people want to try new things. That's really what, and, and you know, talking about things that are hard. The craft beer consumer, generally speaking, is not a brand loyal consumer. They, right. They're the kind of people that want to try different things all the time. And so one of the things that can be hard is staying competitive and, and, and having beers on the market that people are consistently wanting to try. One of the things I'm very proud of, our four beers are consistent. They're consistently good. They're things that people can rely on. But if you're asking like a challenge, I would say it's making sure that we have product that can stack up against whatever that like new thing is, whether that new thing is good or not. Right. So, but it's even the wow, the wow factor of being new. Like a lot of would, would you say that's your core strategy for um, you know going away from your um, your competition? I would say so. Yeah, I think you know we uh, in the beer world you do th there are things called drop-ins, um, and that's basically it's, it's, it's like a it's like, it's like let's make let's do like a one-time run of a beer like a, a beer that's like unique in style, not something we make all the time. It's kind of the, the thing that's like, oh wow, this is like, what's new for red hair, right? Um, and I, I'm excited, we've got a, a cool milkshake IPA that's gonna be coming out in about a month. Wait, stop there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Yeah, and he's in. Yeah, well, I mean, come on down to the brewery, we'll take care of you. Yeah, yeah. That sounds incredible. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, red hair brewing, yeah, milkshake. It's gonna be called Sugar Eye. Oh, I got the can art on my phone. I'll show you what we're doing. There you go. That'd be really cool. I'll take one of those. Well, yeah, we can't disclose it to the audience. Yeah. Yeah. You'll yeah. try to go. Stay tuned. <laughs> but, you know, you have to do those kind of things to stay active, stay relevant. Um, but, I think something that can be said for Red Hair is some of our competitors, their like, core lineup, the beers that they have a, uh, out all the time, are not necessarily ones that I, I mean, I would pick a Red Hair, and I'm not saying that because I'm perfect Red Hair, but like, I would pick a Red Hair beer over some of their core lineup because I can guarantee consistency and quality. Right, that, that's, I see that. that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, I, I, we, we, we've met before, and that's you know, how, how we got you here, but tell me a little bit more about, like, how did you get into the beer industry? You know, there may be people listening that are like, you know what? I've never thought about it. You can just work for a beer company. Yeah. You can work for a yeah. brewery. You can have a full-time job. They'll pay you, and you can live. This is literally my job. Yeah. Like, what we're doing right now, I'm getting paid to do this. All right. Like, like for the record. <laughs> Cheers to that, right? Yeah. 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 Sure. Here we go. Sure. <laughs> so my background. Um, I graduated from the University of Kentucky. Go Cats. And. Um, Oh, well, yeah, that's right, big, big hilltopper guy over here. Not that, not that UK and WK, you have much of a rival with it's not. Not yeah, really, yeah, but, yeah, no, it's Let's be honest, yeah. Thomas More. Oh, yeah, it's Thomas More. Thomas More is just cream of the crop. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, we're going to Kentucky. So, yeah, so I went to the University of Kentucky, uh, and, you know, um, I'm not going to act like I never had an adult beverage before the age of 21, but uh, <laughs> that's what you did. But I definitely did not. <laughs> that's a legal way. Yeah. Uh, and you know, as as time went on, you start out with your standard things, your natty like, your bud like, you know, whatever you can afford as a college. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, no, no, I, no, you're me. We've all been in the same boat. Um, but there are a couple of solid craft breweries in Lexington that I really um, started trying their products and started really enjoying. Obviously, I think the first thing that really got me into it was the idea of supporting local. I like supporting small business. I like supporting a company, you know, same kind of situation with Red Hair, where like I know 
I mean, like I recognize the bartender. I recognize the guy who is coming from the back of the house. He's been brewing beer all day. He's gonna have a pint after work. They sit at the bar. I'm like, that's the guy who made the beer I'm drinking. So like that was the kind of the thought that's process awesome. behind it, and I just sort of started to fall in love with that community. Um, and basically, I had this dream job of doing because I love, also love. You haven't gathered. I really like to talk about stuff. Uh, <laughs> so I I like marketing, and I and I wanted to do marketing for craft brewery or distillery. Um, I ended up moving down toward the Atlanta area. Um, took a job over at yeah, Pizza Bay Town Down. Uh, <laughs> and so, <laughs> and I, I took a marketing job over at the Battery, which was super super fun, especially native breads country. Uh, but I lost my job because of the COVID pandemic, and it actually worked out in my favor because Red Hair happened to be hiring. Um, and so I was able to use those skills of marketing, kind of the hospitality realm that I was gathering when I was working at the Battery. I got my master's in retail and tourism management and hospitality. Uh, and I was able to kind of like pull all that together and land this job with Red Hair and kind of like take the passion. Uh, I think, you know, they, they, they say that saying of like, to find something you like to do, you'll never work a day in your life. And I, you know, I guess I'm a millennial. I took that a little too much to heart, and so I was like, <laughs> well, well, I love, I love beer. Yeah, I, love, I was I love like, beer. Beer. That's, that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I want to do. <laughs> so I was. And you were like, selling it. Yeah. Well, thanks. Man. I hope so. <laughs> we see that you are. You know, you, you, we wouldn't have you on the podcast here if you weren't selling it. You know, I mean, you created success for yourself, and I think that's an incredible thing. Um, so I mean, with that, um, Adam, Adam, you asked what what your biggest your biggest challenge was. Is there something that really moves you to do this more than just that? The more than just you have that passion for it, you have that um, that will to do it. Is there something behind the scenes that moves you to do this? Something that you work towards in the end? Um, I mean, I obviously everybody has to prepare inspiration. So right. Well, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's a good way to. That's a good way to. So where do you go from here, right? right? Like you've said, like this is this is like a job that you you wanted like all along, and you were fighting. You, you you knew you wanted to do this out of college. You you got this. Now where do you go? From you here? know, it's funny. I've been asked that question before, and it's kind of hard to answer because I don't want to act like suddenly I just landed the only thing in my life. And yeah. Like I mean, I guess I've been working at Red Hair about a year and a half. Like 27 years old. It's like, man. I mean, I didn't land my dream. Right. And so mentally, you're like, where do you want to go from here? I think what's most important to me, wherever I'm at, is working with the team around a product that I can be passionate about, and everybody at the team is passionate about, and then working as a unit to help it succeed. So whether that's in the beer world, which I would, would certainly love it would be, um, and you know, it's red hair, because I love red hair, and I want to help them do that. Uh, I think that, you know, we have opportunities to grow together, and that's what I, I just like want to move everything forward. So really, it's not necessarily about it's not about where you're working. It's about who you're working with. So that that's your biggest thing. It's not necessarily like you know I'm trying to get here and make this one. Like your your thing is like I really just want to be around awesome people around a product that I care about and, and keep pushing that. And something that that's awesome. I mean that's that's huge. You know like we are the Dreamer Cigars podcast and talk about all these different things, right? Goals, dreams, all this, but like, I feel like in today's day and age, like people get confused about what a dream is. It doesn't have to be the big fancy sports cars and CEO of this company. Like, enjoying what you do and being going to work with a smile on your face every day. Sure. That's a dream. I had a buddy who once said he was like explaining me as a person, and he was like, Michael's not the guy who's determined to become a Fortune 500 CEO, make a bunch of money, and work an 80 hour work. Like, I don't have a desire to do that. Don't get me wrong, I want to be financially successful, take care of a family, that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, I want to enjoy what I'm doing, I want to like care about what I'm doing. Because I think that it yields a better situation for me professionally, and a better situation for where we're working for. You like, don't care about what you're doing, you're not going to do a good job. I completely agree. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something that, you know, we've seen here at Cutters. Oh, you know, yeah. we've, seen, we've seen that here at Cutters so many, you know, with, with Russ and Christine, we've had them both on the podcast now. Them starting this place, creating this atmosphere, they're so passionate about this industry. So with that, we really have, I think we're going to have to take a quick moment to just take a sip. We're going to have to hear about our sponsor.
No worries, Mark. It's awesome. Big shout out to Cutter Cigar and Spirits. This place is absolutely fantastic. It's got the cigars, it's got the spirits, and just a fantastic atmosphere. The people are amazing. I just can't say enough about it. Logan, what is your favorite thing about Cutters? Man, it's exactly what you said. It's the atmosphere. When you walk in, you're welcome. You go right in the humidor. You get the right cigar for your palate. I just absolutely love that and the genuineness of this industry and this, this place. It's just fantastic. So next time you're in make sure you stop in and see us at Cutter Cigar and Spirits. And we're back. <laughs> you like that? That was like that one. We should, we should do that. And, and we're back. It's like, what? Go away, tiger. And we're back. Oh, well, I guess. Yeah. No. Okay. Logan, I, I think. I don't like Logan Llama. Logan Llama. Oh, wow. I've been called that one other time in my life, and I walked away. There you go. Well, don't walk away this time. I, I think you got a question. I think you got another question from me, Mike. Yes, I do. So, Michael, um, we've asked you a lot of important questions about you and your success and how you got into uh, cigars and the industry that you're in now. But why did you specifically get into cigar? We talk about beer, but why cigars? What got you into um, cigars in the first place? So, yeah, like, we talk about how, okay. but why? What, what made you keep going? Okay, so this is like kind of a I think it's true. Well, the, um, my so I'm engaged. I'm set to be married here in November. Nice oh my Congratulations! <laughs> Can I get it? In? Oh, <laughs> I'm checking that ring. Oh my God. Um, but, no, it's something that my hey, actually uh, I should say. It's sorry. something. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. So there you go. There you go. Good. That's important. It's something that my future in-laws are really into. Um, Ooh. Yeah, my father-in-law, my future father-in-law, my future brother-in-laws are all really into cigars. Um, and I mean, it's important. being around them in general, it was like more prevalent and, and more of a thing for me to like experience. And I will give them credit. Like I was like a every once in a while here and there cigar smoker. And I don't know if I, I wouldn't tell my doctor that I'm a regular cigar smoker. But <laughs> like, do I like do I smoke more cigars than I like care to admit? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like I, I enjoy. As I say to the dentist, I enjoy the engagement cigar. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the other side of the family, yeah. you wanted to, um, you know. Well, I wanted something I would like to talk about, that, right? Like, right. Bond, right? It, be it becomes a good conversational piece. For sure. Um, and it's also really nice. I mean, like, thank you. Okay, dream cigar moment. Like, my favorite time. Dreamer cigars moment. Dreamer cigars moment. You, <laughs> that. you should. That needs to be a new second. Dreamer cigars moment. moment. All right, so this is mine, okay? Cigars, bro? It's Thanksgiving Day. Specifically Thanksgiving Day. Okay. Okay. Day it's like it, probably stay. Honestly, yeah. honestly, I don't at this point over the last five years I think I've had a cigar every single Thanksgiving. It just it's like a very feels like a very that's the other thing about cigars that I really enjoy. Like they're celebratorial. Right? Like, like right now I'm celebrating good friends. Like that word? That's very yeah, much a word. Celebratorial. 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 Yeah. It's a little celebratory. So it's Thanksgiving Day. You've got a handful of people that it, it's like the lull in the day. Like the pre-morning cooking has already taken place. If you've already watched the parade, the lions are getting their butt kicked on TV. There you go. Yeah, thank God. God. Yeah. <laughs> you're out like you're out on the back porch, and you're just like smoking a stogie, having a good drink. Like people, like you know, friends and family, they care about. Them. That is like my perfect cigar. Those, you know, awesome. like, those are the things that I look forward to. Like, like, like That's pretty cool. Yeah. I gotta say, it's pretty funny that like we have we have kind of like uh, you, you and the we do. Adams have a lot in common. We do. Yeah. Well, sure. So how I got into craft beers was my future in laws. So like, you know, they had great taste. They did. They did. <laughs> like he, he's the one who introduced me to Untapped. He's got almost 2,000. Yeah, so he's, he's a dedicated member. Um, but that's how I got into craft beers, was, you know, I, I met my future in-laws. I was like, okay, you know, you're always trying to impress me or whatever. And this guy's drinking craft beer after craft beer after craft beer. And I had, I had dabbled in it before, but I never, like, I mean, I couldn't tell you the difference between it. Anything I'd share. Sure. Probably would be like, this root beer beer tastes really good. <laughs> yeah. This thing is so strong. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, dude. Oh, man. This root beer is going to my butt. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, like, 
that's what got me into it too. So it's pretty cool. Like you got into scars, yeah. and then I got so you know, it's, it's something that you always stay, just try something new, and stay flexible. You know, so that, that's pretty funny. That that's a, that's the way it happened. But now I I drink craft beer all the time. And probably, I mean, like I'll go to a brewery. If, if I go to a place that has like any anything more than five craft beers on like the menu, I'll be like, you have a flight. Yeah. You'll be like, no, I'll be like, okay. You want to know a secret of trade? Ooh. Yes. If you're a bartender, <laughs> well, okay, how do I phrase this? If you ever go somewhere and it's busy, like, if you're there on a Saturday night, yeah, don't order a flight. Yeah. That's Try as much as you can. Don't get me wrong. I want everybody to taste down yeah. their fingers in the craft beer. I just definitely like, agree. Do you want to like a wet Saturday night is especially, like, you're, like, you're not doing a flight. It's fine. It's fine. Because I can, I can tell you. Shots of beer. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Oh, and also tip your bartenders. Because a lot of the times people order flights and they'll like tip us if they ordered one beer. You gotta remember your bartender just poured you four or five beers and they've got a line of people that they gotta serve. Just, you know, tip as you please. No to the audience. Well, I, I, I say that. I feel that. I feel that. Actually, don't tip John. Well, not John. Not <laughs> don't tip John. He makes enough money. Yeah. <laughs> John, I, mean, I, don't tip. I was like, I know John's side gigs. So, so fine. don't touch him. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Right, John just got a big head. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's back there stressing. Wait, so Michael, we're gonna have so many clips of John after this. <laughs> 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 we are. Have you had your producer on the show yet? We haven't. You got no. Who's gonna you know, you Would you produce the show if we have John yeah, on the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, there, if there's a Camacho on the ball, well, I will produce the show. There you go. Well, will it be good footage? Okay, it would be John. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. This is our first watch, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about the cigar. What are yeah, we we, we got to review this little. Yeah. This little We're all about halfway through. I this is my first Camacho, and I actually love it. It pairs really well. You know, like October best beer. This works out. It's incredible, actually. It's really yeah. very clean. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's like all all it's hair. Hair. Yeah. You got some ash on your corner. <laughs> it's the Unleashed the Camacho Toro Unleashed. The Camacho Factory. And what were those notes? Because I actually did taste So, earthiness, I'm getting a little earthiness. I'm, I'm definitely getting earthiness. I'm not. That Georgia Clay has hit me. The last time I ate dirt. We talk about it on every podcast. Earthy. Every single one of them. What does earthy mean? Earthy, like, when I think of earthy, put it, put it it's, in it's a mix. It is a mixture of like grassiness, but not not very heavy in grass. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, it really is when you're like it tastes like dirt. Yeah, like uh, a little bit like dirt. <laughs> a little bit like dirt. That's hard. It's, it's a grassiness. Yeah, so he's eating like, grass. And he's a lot. You are a cow. Yeah, you know this. <laughs> you know this cow. I can't say it's a vet. I learned a lot about cows. They've got a lot of better or worse. Something. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> now did we? Like did we see? We, were, we got caught up pretty quick. Yeah. Did we see any difference in the shaggy foot? I did, but because the shaggy foot, I mean, so it's short, so short. Yeah. That I'm in my head, I can't tell if it's because it's like moving into the middle third. It'd be interesting if somebody did half and half. Now I don't know if that oh, binder cool. could hold together, but it'd be interesting if somebody did a half and half cigar so you could really tell. Now it would be nuts if they did like. Each third, like the first third, is just the fill. Yeah, there's no way that. There's no way they can do that. There's no way. But it'd be pretty cool just to 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 learn that taste. I liked it though. I, I liked how the how like it moved in from flavors. One of the ones yeah. you said was creaminess. Yep. Yeah, I got the creaminess on the. I'm getting. I actually did taste that. Not not as much as I move further in a cigar, but other than front. I mean, what is even is creaminess? Like, how do you define if a cigar is? No, I can help with this. It's it's like, like, oh, it go, oh, it goes, beers are yeah, yeah. Say, beers are like that too. It's it's a mouthfeel thing, which sounds really pretentious when you say it out loud. But but honestly, That's it true. is like a mouthfeel. It is like a flavor thing. So yeah. the way the the smoke or in my world, the beer kind of sits in your mouth after you exhale the smoke or after you swallow the beer, kind of where your taste buds are are sitting. Um, you know, some stuff like if you were drinking like a whiskey, if you're gonna like it's a it's very thin in body, and it's going to kind of burn a little bit as it goes down, and you'll have like flavors left over residue-wise. But I would never like like call it whiskey green because of the just alcohol. Yeah. Uh, 
Like, it's more earthy. Yeah, yeah, it's so it's it's actually yeah. more environmental, that kind of thing. I was actually not at all a bourbon or whiskey guy before I really, really got into cigars. Like, I probably started like diving into the cigar game about a little less than a year ago. And it took me getting That's so it. far. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's only a year ago. Yeah, I've been, I dove in like really hard. Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay, keep going. I didn't mean yeah. to cut you off. I was pretty, I mean, that's kind of like podcast faux pas, but like still. No, no, like no, no it's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I mean, I've been smoking cigars since I was 18, and then probably like once, uh, probably twice a month through college. And then my dad, I got a lot of cigars from my dad, that's how I got into it. I got he, his company like gave him a bunch of cigars and I got his hand me down. So. Oh, cool. Anything that was like the crapper was They used to the cigars. Yeah, exactly. The rapper was cracking and he was like, I don't know, whatever. The crapper was crappy. The crapper was crappy, yeah. Well, I okay, didn't hear that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's that social supercation again, man. <laughs> I almost brought it up and I was like, no, that's not good. <laughs> social lubrication. Social lubrication. I'm getting down to my social lubrication there. But maybe that's why. No. But yeah, I mean, like, it's, yeah, the, the bourbon, that's where, I, that's where I was going. The, there was one day where I, I wasn't a bourbon drinker, and I was at a bar with my fiance, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have an old-fashioned. Because that's kind of like good introductory like, bourbon yeah. type. You know? Sugary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, I, I had to be old-fashioned about halfway through. I was craving a cigar, because I could pull the notes that I usually get out of a cigar out of that bourbon. It was crazy. I was like, I know exactly what cigar I want to play now. Like I knew all I wanted. It could run in 1964. Interesting. It was it was like, oh, I had that one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was like, uh, what? And then eventually I was like, okay, next drink I had, I was like, uh, I'm gonna have uh, something straight. Well, I had it on the rocks. And I was like, right, I'm gonna so have not a, straight. Right, not straight. Just not me right. on the rocks. Yeah, just without any. Sugar or anything, you know. I was like, okay, maybe this little patch was just too sugary, and I was like, oh, it's great. And then that's now I can drink bourbon on the rocks. I can drink it neat too. I just like it better on the rocks. Well, one giant rock. Here. Well, I like it. Actually, yeah, that's the way to do it. It is the way to do it. Because it doesn't water yeah, it down. My, my mom, mom, if you're listening, I love you. But my mom is a little pretentious sometimes. Woo-hoo. She gets bourbon. I hope she's like, not. Oh, she'll go. Can I have three drops of water in it? And I'm like, Jesus, come on. What is a drop of water? Literally, like, the, like if you, like you're like a distillery in Kentucky, they'll have an eyedropper and they'll literally go, like, and it's just like basically. Okay, so this is the for lack of a better term, this is the exfoliate the bourbon. This is the Kentucky <laughs> coming out. <laughs> bourbon the bourbon and oil. Oh, okay. But have you heard of this? I've I've not heard of that. I haven't really. Well, haven't. I know people that like yeah. you know uh, whiskey water. See, you know, that's a drink that I don't. I don't understand. I don't know. I I'll, I'll, I'll never understand that. Why? Yeah. Whiskey is whiskey. Why? Because it's too harsh for some people. I mean, and it's, it's, it's like having a, having an ice melt and then drinking. Like I know people that'll get whiskey on the rocks and then they have their ice melt like halfway and then they drink it because it's easier. It goes down easier. So it's I guess it's that of just the quick and cheap way to do it. To each his own. I guess. But yeah. um. So but anyways, yeah, Michael. Yeah, I heard some gossip. Oh, the dish, the gossip. I got the dish, thing, and I'm going to dish it out. I hear that Red Hair Brewing is getting into liquor. We sure are. Tell us about this. Yes, so uh, I think I actually have one here on the table. So, ding, ding, ding. so uh, <laughs> we are, uh, as of October of 2020, we became Red Hair Brewing and Distilling. Note the t-shirt. Bingo, bingo. Uh, John, so, zoom in on that. Yeah. <laughs> get the angles. There you go. Uh, so we oh, make vodka, sure. <laughs> gin, and rum. Uh, our uh, company has a nice, like, really, really wonderful Latin heritage to it. Um, our uh, managing partner, Roger's wife, uh, is Venezuelan, but her parents are from Cuba. Uh, and basically, uh, we are moving into kind of like a Cuban rum kind of scene. Uh, okay, so we gotta have you back on. Oh my gosh, oh, oh, yeah. because because that I mean a Cuban rum. Yeah. Maybe we'll sneak a, sneak in a Cuban cigar. If uh, yeah. Yes, which we might be able to. I definitely do. Yeah. Um, I'm not gonna give a shout out, but I will. Either Or 
MonteFortuna.com. Try to get it a while. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> You know, I, I, I try not to like push it too much because they do sell real Cuban cigars, but they're out of Switzerland, so I'm not really sure how that works. Like Switzerland just gets away with everything. Yeah, so they're really good at that. They're really good at that. Really good at that. Yeah, they are really good. So I'm pretty really sure it's legal. So if, if it's not, don't go there. Wait, buy your cigars. But if you would, if it was, go there. Yeah. Go to either of those things. But yeah, anyway, anyways, we're aging rum now. Um, so yeah, we've got vodka gin and rum you can buy at um, either of our Marriott Georgia locations um, with hopes to one day potentially distribute those products. Um, we've got rum aging in barrels right now. So we have um, Fred that's at our location on Marriott Square. Um, and we will soon have some aging at our original location too. So um, rum's in that um, fresh charred barrel. Um, and in addition to that, and I uh, will do my own horn a little bit, and shocker, Kentucky comes into the play. Oh, uh, boy. But I, oh, I being the bourbon drinker that I am, I also was like, guys, like, let's take some rum and some spent bourbon barrels. Um, and so basically, we've got rum in fresh charred oak barrels, rum in used bourbon barrels. We're going to come out with a blended rum probably this winter, right around the Christmas time. Um, so, yeah, I would love to like, drink a bottle when you get it, or a little bit of a bottle, or, you know, maybe a bottle. Maybe a bottle. Oh, all right. Right. Smoke some cigars. That would be some real yeah, super Yeah, got me excited, man. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. You got me so excited that, I mean, I, I'm going to have to take this wrapper off because you, you guys have to so much faster than I do. It's good, buddy. Well, <laughs> speaking of which, I mean, my fingers are right here. You know how you get the end of your cigar and your fingers start burning? Are they okay? Is this the finger burning part? Yeah, okay. This is the finger burning part. The finger burning part. He already knows about some finger burning questions, so I'm gonna have to take my wrapper off. I'm sorry, Camacho. I'm not trying to like get down there, toss you out here, but I got some finger. My fingers are just burning. You don't want to burn them fully, y'all. Don't want to burn out. So, so Logan, I'm gonna have to just hand it off to you. First finger burning question, man. What, what do we got? All right, Michael. I'm not gonna let it. First finger burning <laughs> question. They, I, I love these questions, man. They're, they're, they're finger burning. They're finger burning. Finger burning questions. If you could smoke a cigar with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? Anyone dead or alive? I'm going to give you a real show. I'm going to answer that. Straight up. Straight up. I was going to some time in. So no, no, no. no, 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 no. no. So why, why was the church? Okay, first off, the dude's going to write a cigar a day, if not multiple. Like you, any photo you see of Churchill, any, 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 well, okay, yeah, but then, okay, actually, then, <laughs> just watch our last episode. <laughs> but I would say probably, in that way, probably smoke like four cigars a day. So no, 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 no. First off, I would smoke a cigar a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good thing. Yeah, so that's a good thing. So that's a good thing. Yeah, 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 Hefty See, I like, I really like okay, I really like long cigars, but then when I, when I smoke a long cigar, I don't want to finish it. But I like I like the, like the less of the heat because it kind of yeah. Really okay. Okay. The Audrey Hepburn, if you will. Understand. So that's point number one, and then point number two is because I mean, incredibly intelligent man, right? Super super smart. Would love to just pick his brain about things, and then also like I just you know I want to learn how the heck he. You beat the Nazis. <laughs> yeah, like, I want to pick his brain. That's a good question. Yeah. That's, that's, that's probably good. one of the, like the greatest, one of the greatest military feats. Most oh, so that was pretty important. Well, I do have another finger burning question because my fingers are just burning. But yeah, I'm oh, burning. Oh, my mouth is also getting dry, so I think I'm gonna have to just go ahead and crack open. I hope it's called. I don't know. If they were called uh, that's pretty cool. Cool. It's pretty cool. It's called I, I mean. My, my palate just needs a little SPF. Adam, my fingers are burning now. I'm sorry. Is it every time your fingers keep burning? The, your, the tips of your fingers well, I don't know. Or this is like I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not I mean, bartender like gonna, John. I wasn't gonna say. Yeah. It. Um, well, I had to make sure there was a little bit of for the for my brother. Please. Anyways, so now second question. We'll see if you're just as ready for this one. Okay, probably not. If you could smoke a cigar. Anywhere on this earth, or I guess you should say No, we'll go to Earth. You want to go to space? <laughs> Guys, I'm not going to lie. I don't, I, Jeff Bezos. I, I don't want to smoke a cigar in space. Look, it's incredibly dangerous. You're that in a is small. You are in a condensed area. Yes, yeah, so you've true. got an open flame. You like, see where you started? I'm not trying to blow up. I'm good. Oh, oh my god. Space. There you go. All right. But you can smoke 
cigar anywhere. Where? Uh, um, can I get can I get two, please? Maybe it depends on the second one. Yeah. Okay. The first answer. Uh, <laughs> the first answer, as it currently stands, is probably like on the beach in Atlanta. It's always on the beach. No, no, what but are you going to look at? Specifically, specifically in the thing. Okay. 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 But what are you looking at okay. as you smoke the cigar? The ocean. You're, you're, the ocean. The ocean. It's water. So we had a lot of very first cigar for this. I just was like, I just got back from, yeah. from, from the ocean and I was smoking a cigar, looking over the ocean. It was a great experience. And pretty much every time we ask this question now, ever since the first episode, somebody has brought up. Water. Well, so I've got, I've got the second answer. Right, the second one's gonna be the second not water. No, it's not, but it's not necessarily. I guess it's, it's not location based, so it doesn't quite answer your question, but it's more like circumstance based. But like the roll out, roll out, finger burning question. Where are now? Yeah, yeah. wherever I'm at, celebrating the birth of my first child. Man, I am light up a fat. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's cool. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I got one. I, I can get you a cigar by our good friends at Machu Picchu Cabana. That you can get any custom box. If you guys want a custom box, go go check out Machu Picchu Cabana. But I can get you one that. Not kidding. The ring gauge, which good information for everybody. Do you know what a ring gauge is? Isn't that how wide? There you go. See, I there you go. How wide is it? Yeah. How wide it is? I'm not kidding. It's that wide. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it not is that. just <laughs> it is just as wide as that. All right. So now so I'm so ridiculous. Now it's time for me. Now it's time for me to throw a finger burning question. How on earth do you smoke a cigar that wide? Um, right. Are you literally going like like spinning the cigar as you're? Well, so here's 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 the thing. We talked about this on the second podcast. It, it, it's actually a creative way to cut that cigar because your typical cutter is not going to be able to cut that correctly. So what you do is you grab, you know what a punch cut is? Mm -hmm. I like punch cuts and beat cuts. Those there you go. Not much of a so cut. what you do is you do a, a triple punch. So you do like one, two, three, like a triangle. Uh, okay. Almost like if you were going to skip the bottom left, the yeah. bottom right thing, okay. realm of the Olympics. Like you do a, yeah, it's a good way to describe it. Even if it is brought up the Olympics on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, they're like that triangle, that's the way that you punch a magnificent large cigar. Okay. That, that's that's pretty much the only way I know how to cut it. And I actually smoked it. It took me about two, two and a half hours. So I have had that cigar before. It's about as tall as a white claw. It's, it's a white claw. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's I'm like, not going to lie, guys. That's, a, that's overwhelming for my, for my it, 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 I think it's overwhelming for anybody, but it is an experience. So make sure you have the X amount of time and you don't do anything after. You look, have that. Hey, but anyway, it's a good Last uh, finger burning question. I've got to do it because my fingers up. I, I keep putting down my score because uh, my fingers are going away. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Sorry. But what is something or someone that inspires you to just to keep? Going. Like you've talked about, your, your industry's fun, really fun, but it's also really hard. So, what's something or someone that inspires you to just keep going, keep pushing on those hard days? Oh man, wow, that is a deep freaking question. That is a deep question. We're dreamer stars, we're going to do dream. Um, okay. I think what it really comes to me, and I kind of alluded to this earlier. In fact, I think everything I've said kind of leads up to this point, actually. It all kind of does. You know, remember, you remember I made a comment, it's not about like the work you're doing, but the people you're dealing with, right? Like, I am very much the kind of person uh, that's going to go through the nitty gritty because I've got people around me that are also doing, like, like punching through everything with me. And so I guess in terms of like what keeps me going, it's like knowing that I've got, you know, my teammates, if you will, for going to sports now, and you're yeah. going to workers, whoever's, whoever's in the thick of it with me, like, Knowing that they're like trudging through, to, like too, um, that would be uh, off, like for like the first thing I would say. And then the second one is like, I don't know. Um, I feel like everybody wants to succeed, you know. And and I, I like I like to feel like I'm a driven person. And at the end of the day, I'm not just gonna let something. I'm, I can't. 
Okay, this is a great example, and it's very much microcosm. Uh, uh, we're here at Cutter's Cigar and Cigar, cigar Experience. Experience. There you go. I'm a uh, big fan. Uh, and Josh, the bartender, if you haven't seen him, uh, go give him a pat on the back for the last guy. Yep. Um, we were doing like a pre meeting related to the podcast. And everybody got up to go start setting up the podcast, and there were like three glasses sitting on the table. As somebody who works at a brewery, I, I, I physically can't let glasses leave, like, sit on the table. Because I know that if I leave that there, Josh is going to have to come back and pick it up. And so for me, it's like, okay, well, I already know that he's working the butt off. And, like, I'm not going to let something, like, become a fault or something go wrong on my account and then have somebody else have to clean up the mess for it. So, so, like, I, I, I took the glasses to him and he was like, dude, I was going to come and get them. I was like, I can't let them sit here. I did. I did literally can't do right. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and it's, it's like really, it's sort of simple. And it's right down to like empty glasses. But the reality is that when you have been in someone's shoes, um, or even if you had, everybody's got their own thing going on. And like, I want to make sure that everybody can keep surviving and thriving. Right? So that's awesome. That's that, wonderful. That is really cool. That, I mean, that. that that's a great cat. Yeah. To the podcast, I think it's been it's been absolutely awesome to have you guys. Your beer has been fantastic. Even the second one, you know, I'm on the second one now. My second emotional supercation. <laughs> I love that. Because we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna trademark. But it, it's been really awesome to see. Like, congratulations for one. I mean, you you, you, you know you you you've made your you know so you know quote unquote your dream job and you know, you're going and you're love what you do like not a lot of people out there and have that so that that is just so awesome i think logan and i have learned so much about the beer industry as well as like how it all how it how it can progress into something that can change lives which is you know also something that's super people don't think about you know people think about beer think it's just beer yeah beer a beer is a lot a beer and a good time so that, that, that is just awesome. And if you want to learn more about beers, go to Red Beer Brewing. we got Marietta location. What's the other location? Yes, yeah, so we got two locations in Marietta. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have a location in Shalope, North Carolina, yep. just south of Bloomington, just north of the Beach. Yeah. Uh, nice. So yeah, speaking of smoking a stuck cigar on the beach, go yeah. ahead and head, head on over, have a couple tough guy sodas over at Red Hair. And then go light up a stogie right there on the beach. Yep. Love it. Love that. So awesome. go check out Michael. Get a tour from them at Red Hair Brewing Marietta. Absolutely, guys. That I think that's a wrap. Make sure that all of you guys watching, you're subscribing to our YouTube, you're following us on Instagram, on everything that you can do. Make sure that you are hitting that notification bell, guys. Right here. Right here, look, right above you. That's our YouTube. So click that right there. Here it is. Right here. Right? Instagram's over here. Click this Instagram, right? Oh, that IG. Make sure that you're following. Yeah, that IG, the big IG. But make sure that you guys, we, we just, we appreciate you guys so much following and everything. We've had such a good time on each and every podcast. And Michael, thank you so much for being a guest. I think that we're going to have to close it out. Oh, well. Cheers out. Yes, there you go. go. Oh, crack it up. There, there you go. go. There you go. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Oh, yeah. yeah.